day and you will worship him in honor and love. So you will put on your quote unquote Sunday best. All right. So this reminds me of sayings that we used to have called Sunday go to meet and close. As you can see from what I have on right now. These are our dress clothes. Our uh, Sunday best and my new favorite from the early 1800s which are glad rags so we should all be glad to be here this evening amen, amen. all right <clears throat> now these uh, the suit of armor that we get from God contains God's gifts it contains the gift of truth the gift of righteousness the gift of salvation, the gift of the gospel, and the gift of the word. Now, each one of these gifts are given to us by God for our defense in spiritual warfare. Now, we must suit up every morning with these gifts that God gives us. And the Bible describes these gifts as our suit up suit of armor. Now, the first piece of this suit of armor that we put on is the belt of truth. Now, John 14, 6 tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now this is our base truth without which we are lost, because we have to accept Jesus in our heart for the rest of the armor to take effect. And we must base ourselves in truth, which is Jesus, so that the armor can protect us as God would have it do. Now, this base armor that we put on, we suit up with, just like as the old timers say in the old days, long johns, and the new people say, under armor, we put this base layer on, which would the suit of armor attaches to. Now, John 8.32 tells us, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Now, when Jesus said this, this is a commonly referred to scripture that people sometimes misunderstand. Now, if Bud tells Fran the truth, yes, it will keep him out of the doghouse, but this is not the truth that we are talking about. We have to accept Jesus as the truth. We accept that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and we take him as our Savior. And this is our basis, our belt of truth that we must put on every morning. Amen. Now, the Roman soldier called his belt a bataeus, and that bataeus held the scabbard, which is the holster for a sword. Now, as a Christian soldier, we must all have a scabbard for our weapon. Amen. In Jesus' day, the shepherd did not have a sword, but he had a belt as well. Now, his belt was used to roll up and tuck in his robes in case of swift movement. Now, Jesus wants us to have our belt of truth in case he swiftly calls us to go about spreading his word. Now, as we go about swiftly spreading his word, he wants to protect us with the breastplate of righteousness. So 2 Corinthians tells us, 521, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, this refers to our belt because Jesus was made sin for us. And the only way for us to be righteous is to accept Jesus and know that we can't do this ourselves. No man can get to God by his works, and no man can get to God by his ability. Therefore, we must rely totally and completely on the truth of accepting Jesus and allowing him to make us righteous. Amen. Now, righteousness refers to our right relationship with God, which means having our hearts focused in a godly manner. Now, when God gives us this breastplate of righteousness, Jesus puts his stamp on it. So, in Jesus putting his stamp on it, he tells us, your righteousness is not good enough. Jesus takes off his breastplate for us to wear. And this protects our heart. And as it protects our heart, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So in seeking righteousness, we accept God and we seek him. Amen. Now as we seek God, he wants us to go about his work. Which leads me to our third piece of the armor, which is 
feet fitted with readiness of the gospel of peace. Now, 2 Timothy 4.2 tells us, preach the word and be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and courage with great patience and careful instruction. So, as we base ourselves in the truth, we must spread that gospel of truth to those we meet. Our feet fitted with readiness refers to our availability to God and being able to explain to someone why it is we believe what we believe and to bring them to God with the gospel and explaining to them that this is the only way that you will make it. Now the Roman soldiers had sandals and these sandals contained nails in the bottom which were spikes and these spikes allowed them to gain traction on slippery ground. Now as a Christian soldier our traction must be gained from the gospel as we go about tucking in our robes into our belt and swiftly spreading the word. Amen? Now, as a mailman, you would not want me to deliver your Christmas package in a pair of flip-flops because I can tell you the truth, I wouldn't make it until springtime. <laughs> Which, as we go about spreading this faith, God gives us our piece of the armor that is our defense, which is the shield of faith, which is the fourth piece of the armor. And he says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, as you notice, it says, take up the shield of faith, which means it requires effort on our part. We must take it up and hold it aloft. Because if we strap that shield to our arm and let it hang, not only are we exposed, but our armor is exposed as well. So our faith will protect us. And it is a shield, because this shield moves with each attack. So that a skilled Christian soldier can block those fiery arrows which come at you from all directions. Amen? Now, 1 John 5, 4 tells us, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen? So our faith is believing in God and allowing us to do things we wouldn't normally be able to do. This faith allows us to strap on the belt, tuck in our robes, and go swiftly even into the most dangerous of situations. Matthew 17, 20 says, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, which is tiny, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Amen. Nothing will be impossible for you. So just as Peter walked on water, amen, we are able to do great things with our faith. Our faith is a shield, and the Roman's soldier shield was able to block a lot of attacks. It also had a boss on the front of it, which was used to push back an attacker. So our faith, when we are pushed upon by the world, will allow us to push back and regain our feet fitted with readiness, amen, so that we can spread that gospel of peace. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So faith allows us to see beyond the natural and into the supernatural. It allows us to look past our circumstances that we are in and believe in the plan that God has for us. Amen. And I want you all to know that I feel blessed right now with all of you being here tonight. Ephesians 4.13 tells us, Until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now, this unity in faith allows us to come together as a body. We bring our shields together, and the Roman soldiers called this a testudo or tortoise. And when they formed these shields together, it was a wall that became an impenetrable field. And if we, Christ soldiers, can bring our shields together, we form a wall to protect this body of Christ. Amen? Now, just as the prayer chain has come to us in our times of need, prayed for children in this church that have had cancer, 
and amen, they are recovering. Our faith blankets each other so that when we suit up in the morning with this faith, we are not only blanketing and defending ourselves, we are blanketing and defending our Christian brothers and sisters. Amen. Now, the last piece of the armor that we don is the helmet of salvation, which is our fifth piece of the armor. Romans 12.2 tells us, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, hey, this is the fifth piece of the armor because it is the last piece that we put on. This is what protects our minds. And in renewing our minds, it refocuses us on God. For our minds are the battlefield, which is why we have to be careful as Christians of what we allow to come into us. Our minds must constantly be refocused on the heavenly and not the mundane. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is in Jesus Christ. And laying our foundation in God goes back to our belt, basing us in truth and allowing us to go swiftly on our feet fitted with readiness to spread that gospel of peace. Now, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, Psalm 73, 25 says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. So if we allow our minds to become focused on things of this world, it clouds our minds from becoming focused on Jesus. Amen. Now, in focusing on Jesus, we move to our helmet, which protects our minds. And I remember as a child, I remember as a young man, I'm sorry, we would ride our bikes in the woods and Courtney would ride her uh, bike seat behind me because she was just a baby at the time. Well, we would ride with another couple and the young man did not have his child on his bike, but I had my child on mine. And being young, watching him jump a creek, I jumped that creek right behind him with Courtney behind me. And yes, Ernie, we fell. <laughs> but, you know, thank the Lord, he's been watching over me all my life. So when I pulled her up, she was not crying. She was smiling at me because she was happy to see my face. But there was a dent in that helmet. And thank you, Lord, it was in the helmet and not her head. <laughs> So as we put on this helmet of salvation, it protects our minds. And then we put it on in the morning, we must remember to refocus on God. Amen. Now, our last piece of the armor, which is six, the sword of the spirit. Now, this is our weapon. Okay. This is not a piece for defense. It is our offensive part. John 1 1 tells us, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So this refers back once again to our belt of truth, because Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. We take Him as our Savior. Jesus was and is the Word. He came to give us the Word. And this is the Word that we study and renew our minds with to focus on God. Amen. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates, dividing even soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thought and attitudes of the heart. So, in renewing our mind, we read the word. And this word will help us discern the difference between godly motives and our motives. Amen. Because we are Christian brothers and sisters, and we want that righteousness that God has put on our heart to seep in so that we go about actions of love. So we study the word, and it is not only our offensive weapon, but it changes our hearts as we study it and meditate on that word. Now, my granny is over 100 years old the other day, amen? And she is on her second pacemaker. Now, when she goes to the doctor, because she's 102, she goes to the doctor, the doctor will ask her, Miss Collins, what is your secret? And thank you, Lord, because she is, is what I have rooted from, thank you. And she tells them, my secret is Jesus. Because as long as we're putting on that armor and doing his work, we can live to the age of Methuselah. Amen. <laughs> now, in conclusion, we have put on our armor. So our last act 
is prayer. Prayer must be heavenly focused. And as we read that word and our mind is transformed into a godly way and our heart is transformed through the purity of love for our Christian brothers and sisters, we pray earnestly for one another because you have to have a deep concern for everyone around you. I thank you so much for being here tonight that it warms my heart. And I have a deep concern for you that when I pray for you, I want nothing but God's will to happen in all of your lives. Amen. Colossians 2.15 tells us, And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made public the spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And what this means, referring back to our belt of truth, as accepting Jesus as the Lord of our lives, we accept the victory that he has already claimed for us. Now we must remember to daily suit up in the belt, the breastplate, the helmet, raise our shield for defense, and go swiftly about the gospel. But he has already won the victory, and we must fight the battle daily, focusing on him and his word. Amen. So I would ask that you pray with me right now. Father God who art in heaven, you know our hearts, you know our minds. We ask that you focus on you. Allow these words to penetrate and grow great fruit, Lord. And thank you for allowing us to come together around your table this evening and worship you. Thank you for this blessing in thy son Jesus' name. Amen.